I was invited to Mexico uh, to a workshop. My colleagues at uh, UNAM uh, were setting up a center to study university industry relations. Mm -hmm. And so I was invited there. And there in the discussions, uh, government was everywhere. You couldn't look at uh, university without seeing the role of government, or industry without seeing the role of government. And so then I walked out of the uh, meeting room and I said, university, industry, government, triple helix. Okay, so that's where the first, I put the label on it. Mm -hmm. But actually, I saw it a long time Also, it was inspired in, in, in Mexico. The label, or yes. The label. The label. Yeah, the label. The label. Before the, 1996. The, in the, that was in about um, 1992. Two or so, awesome. early 90s. Great. But actually, long before that, in research that I was doing at MIT, in the, in the archives there, I came across this uh, letters between the president of MIT and the governors of New England about an organization called the New England Council that they had established in the 1920s to deal with the economic downturn. Mm -hmm. And the idea, and there, mm -hmm. they invited not just the uh, business and government to come together, but in New England, universities were so important, a part of the landscape, you couldn't ignore them. Yeah. And so they invited universities to join in this council. Great. And then I saw in the archives a paper which listed the members. Mm -hmm. And they had equal representation from university, All industry, and, industry. and government in oh. three separate columns. Mm -hmm. Great. So I didn't put a label on it there, but I, in doing that study, I was looking at this interaction and how it took place over the decades. It took them 30 years uh -huh. before they finally started a project mm -hmm. in the early post-war, which was to organize the first venture capital firm to fill the gaps in order to systematize the occasional accidental come to the theme we're discussing today, uh -huh. startups, which have been going on since the late 19th century uh -huh. from MIT and uh, Harvard. So they wanted to do it in a more systematic way. They invented an organization to help systematize it, which we now know of as the venture capital firm. Oh, great. Uh -huh. OK? okay. But, that was a f but that was First time when you. But that was not the venture capital firm as we know it today. First of all, it was a public corporation mm -hmm. with a long time frame. Not, the, not a three, even five year fund. Mm -hmm. Because it took about a decade before they had their first success, mm -hmm. which was the Digital Equipment Corporation mm -hmm. and computer, mini computers, DEC. Yeah. And then the mini computer industry. Then we heard a bit about this morning uh, where um, yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike Owen Mike. worked. Mm -hmm. So he came up through that route in, the, in Route 128. I see. Okay. okay. Which, and then, uh, so that is where. Triple Healers came from. Came from this was the bird. That research. Where the actual name came from? Just out of curiosity. It's amazing name. about the helix. I want to understand look, why do you think about okay. helix? Look, so I like to say sometimes that biology is simpler mm -hmm. than society. Mm -hmm. It took two helices uh, mm -hmm. to model like DNA, mm -hmm. but we needed three university, industry, government to model innovation. And of course, there are people Please. that are trying to, to put a fourth yeah, one there. Those, right. are, those are mistaken <laughs> ideas. Exactly. I'd like to understand why people as well, they say, okay. cut two pochines. Well, okay. It's it's people. Well, one easy way to, and I can't complain because after all, I had a three to two. Uh -huh, uh, I see. Okay. But uh, I don't agree with them that civil society is a fourth helix. Mm -hmm. From my point of view, civil society is something that surrounds mm -hmm. and provides a framework for the development of the optimum triple helix model, where people can come together, form new organizations without asking permission mm -hmm. from government, the yes, way it was described to us mm -hmm. uh, at, uh, at Berkeley. Mm -hmm. Bottom up, yeah. sideways, top down, exactly. every which way. So you, you could even and still have the triple helix with a circle around it. And uh, many uh, others, many models. others. Yeah, and, and civil and society is that circle yeah. around it. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I call it, it's, the, it's the amniotic fluid. Mm -hmm. ah, it provides the way to grow I the see. triple helix. Mm -hmm. So look at it as a wound. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's how I view civil society, not as a separate exact institutional sphere. It's not on the same level. 
mm -hmm. as university industry government. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to write something now about this. In fact, I'm collaborating with uh, another okay. Okay. colleague in Brazil. Colleague in Brazil. Professor. Justin, uh, uh, anyway. I oh, if it was, it was a colleague in Canada, I would say it was Justin Bieber. Uh, no, 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 it doesn't matter. Okay. And how was this, this difference between the theory when you created in 1993, 1994, to now? How do you see the difference? Because I have heard about some differences. Uh, well, look. Uh, the agents, how do they change and how you can... Well, look, uh, I view it uh, this way of, uh, as institutions. Uh -huh. uh, the colleague that I was working with on it, uh -huh. uh, Leidersdorf, uh -huh. uh, he views it uh, differently. Uh -huh. uh, he doesn't see it as an institutional theory but more as a theory of uh, communication and uh, doesn't see it as university industry government, but in terms of, uh, I don't know, you better ask him. Okay, great. But, you know, but I, I'm very happy. So there's different ways to of, see of, this, of seeing these. These different. Yes. Great. And now uh, with the, the advent of startups, the spin offs how do you think that you can place these new institutions inside of triple helix, how you can see inside of academia, inside of industry, government, how do you see this e hybrid? Okay, okay, well that's a, always been a key part yeah, yeah. of the triple like helix. Explain a little bit that is, it's this. really different from, and this is something you need to make point, it's different from a theory of institutional logics, which sees things having one purpose for mm -hmm. one institutional sphere, uh -huh. and then it's looked at almost as illegitimate, although even they recognize there are hybrid logics now. But it's very difficult for them to take account of this intermingling in the yeah. theory of institutional logics because it fundamentally sees things as a part. Mm -hmm. Right from the beginning, the whole idea of a spiral and intersect, overlapping and intersecting mm -hmm. uh, is that uh, what was coming out of these interactions were hybrid organizations and that were more productive because they put together these different elements from university, industry, and government. So that was the key objective, mm -hmm. is to produce these, these hybrids, which may then go back more into one area than another, but in their production, they don't come into existence unless they have this hybridity. And especially, key are people who have more than one role in more than one institutional sphere. Mm -hmm. Like this morning, yeah. we heard about yeah. David My, Peace, yeah. uh -huh. who's key, he's a business person, uh -huh. owns buildings in downtown Berkeley. Uh -huh. He's a professor mm -hmm. in the business school, interested in entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So he was a key person in bringing these th two things together to form physical facilities. And even like Mike Cohen himself, who's, yes. who's somewhere where they're in the IP, the, the IPRA thing, but he's doing, that. he's performing tasks that are not uh, intellectual the property. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. He, look, and this guy Deck as well. He he, uh, he has uh, taken the uh, the Stanford model of uh, OTL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you explain was, a little bit this Stanford model and the sure. OTL? Well, the the original model. Well, the Stanford model was very innovative when uh, Niels Rimmers founded. Stanford OTL in 1971. Before then, an OTL was simply an organization uh, legally oriented mm -hmm. to make patents. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. But then what happened to the patents? That wasn't the, their job. Reamer said the OTL should go out and market I intellectual see. property to uh, expecting the market from market. existing firms. Mm -hmm. But then it seems that uh, not too many existing firms were interested in this new models of technology. Who is most interested in the firm what, what people who are going to start their own startups? In fact, the faculty or the students. Mm -hmm. So they were ending up licensing it to the people who had developed the IP, which was difficult for them to handle. Uh -huh. <coughs> so they put these people through a very difficult process because mm -hmm. they believed you had to be fair. Yeah. You had to give everybody and fair, a chance. Needed to, to give everybody. everyone the same chance. Right? Yes, the, and same the same chance. Yeah. So the people would have to hold their breath while OTL went ahead and tried to market it mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah, tried to and sell the patents. This led to problems if they did market it to somebody who then was a potential competitor mm -hmm. because they were, they were telling other people about it. Yeah. Uh, so that, that created uh, problems uh, and still does to this day because they were... Well, I haven't studied them in the last several years, mm -hmm. but the last time I was there, this is the model they were still holding to at Stanford. Mm -hmm. 
and they and they were essentially acting as a gatekeeper, mm -hmm. uh, and they were opposed to other models of dealing with uh, IP. Basically, they were opposed to uh, the students who organized mm -hmm. an accelerator facility. They tried to shut it down. Yeah, and uh, okay. what? In one professor, one of the questions like when you talk about like I'm curious when I specific. I need thing. something to drink. No, oh, sure. Ah, I've, yeah. got, I've got some water. water. Yeah. Yeah. If you want, to, I don't know. You want no, to? Yeah, I can but, just, but but you're almost. Uh, how okay, many it's just for uh, more this. Yeah, Go just, ahead. Just, like, yeah, just yeah. finish. Okay. And I'm interested in sharing with people how we can be successful in Brazil using the triple helix theory in this context of our public universities, not private but public universities and public labs, research labs. Funding must by the government when they they buy all the equipments and they pay the scholarship from the students. How do you see we can use the triple helix framework to understand better this? Okay. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. How do you see we can use this framework? Okay. Well, the same issues exist at public universities in the United States. In the United States, but many of the public universities in the United States were formed for the purpose of uh, developing and using new technologies, especially in agriculture, but then also in industry. These were the, these were the public universities that were formed through the uh, Land Grant Act, the Morrill Act. Uh -huh. So they weren't formed as classical universities, which the public universities in Brazil mm -hmm. are basically classical research universities. The public universities here were founded with a different purpose, to put knowledge to use and also to develop new knowledge. And so that's always been the purpose of these universities. Mm -hmm. Now some, like Berkeley, have moved away from that, into that original purpose. Yeah. They thought only to develop knowledge, not to put it to use. So now it's been controversial at Berkeley, and they've had to adapt, mm -hmm. uh, and through various ways. I've seen it as part of the teaching role of the university. Mm -hmm. Teaching through experience, Great. Uh, rather yeah. than through lectures. Yeah, exactly. So they, they, they include it within the first mission. But yeah. the most fundamental way is to make the triple helix into the university mission. Yeah. And that's why many universities in different parts of the world are using the triple helix <laughs> as founding the academic purpose to, <laughs> to both uh, teach and to research mm -hmm. and then put the research to use including by founding startups and seeing that each purpose can help the other. Great. Awesome. So in the late 19th century in Germany, they formed the model of the uh, university in which research and teaching mm -hmm. were put together because they saw that each assisted the other. When you taught, you got new ideas to research. From the research came new things to, to teach. And so it was seeing that these two together. Uh -huh. So my argument, and that was called the academic revolution. Yeah, the academic now my that. argument is that now we have a second academic revolution <laughs> in which we not have two, we have three. Yeah. Okay? Teaching, yeah. research, yeah. and putting knowledge to use. to use. Okay? And that becomes the third purpose of the university which should be of equal importance to the other two. And so when you make it as equal in importance to the other two, not something off to the side, not something against the purpose of the university, but one of the purposes of the university, then you solve this problem fundamentally. Yeah, and how do you call this third purpose? How do you call in theory, in your theory? Well, this is... Uh, do you have a right... I'm sure I... I'm sure I I'm sure it's all written down ah, in many articles on the second academic uh, revolution. But sometimes it's called the, the third mission of mission. the university. Is that entrepreneurial? For our, yes, for entrepreneurship and innovation. Great. That's basically it. Great. And uh, when you talk about bringing from the lab to the company technology, how do you think we can increase this amount of research, focus on the, the needs of industry and company? Uh, and and uh, using uh, the power of this relationship, it, now I'm talking about the two helix, the university and the industry. Well, are you talking about existing companies? Uh, or, or existing, or the both parts, existing or creating new well, cre Creating new ones, spot, removing the barriers, allowing the companies to start within the research groups, so you don't have to do 
uh, two sets of equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, so that the innovation law of 2004 in Brazil allowed, mm -hmm. but it's the private universities that mostly picked up on that. Yeah. Uh, so I visited uh, a research group in Rio Grande do Sul. Oh, great. Okay, a uh -huh. firm called 4G, yeah. a biotech firm. So uh -huh. uh, everyone in the lab mm -hmm. is a member of the firm and also the research group. Uh -huh. So they do some of the parts of the day they're working on the basic research, uh -huh. other parts of the day they're working on the biotechnology. But in biotechnology, the two are very closely related. Yeah. It's hard to separate the theory from the practice. From the practice. Okay, theory. so there it's very clear that there's no great division. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they, the product is made in a bioreactor mm -hmm. and they ship it to San Diego to biotech firms mm -hmm. that they have contracts really? with. Really? From San Diego, from Brazil to from San Diego? Brazil, yes, awesome. yes. Okay, awesome. so the law allowed that, but the private universities are the first to pick up on that, but yeah. now you've yeah. just told me... I don't know what you need to... But you know, public, public, public universities have to, you know, trick, trick the, the law somehow. Yeah. And or you have to understand exactly when is the little space that you have yeah. and use yeah. this little space yeah. to take... Yeah. Yeah. Well, also yeah. in, in Latin America, there's a long tradition of the university and especially students being politically active mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, on broader issues in society. Yeah. That's another tradition. Exactly, yeah. Okay. This is my last question. What yeah. are the tendency? And do you think this is the tendency from uh, Latin America and from Brazil or for our research labs? What do you think is the tendency that will be a, a field that we can the investigate? Yeah. Okay, the well, trends well, that think, we can investigate? I think, that, uh, I think there's a global trend. Okay, it comes from uh, different directions, but fundamentally, everyone wants to figure out how to apply knowledge yeah. to improving the society, both economically and socially. Mm -hmm. And the university plays a key role. That's why I argue that the university is even the most important actor in the Triple Helix, because the university has the knowledge, the university has the students. Yeah who are the ones who are the carriers of the knowledge out into the society. So that makes the university a key player in the triple